Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today we're we'll going to be taking a look at the 10 champions that were ruined by pro play. Champs are often buffed or nerfed depending on how well they are doing in average levels of play. However, some of Riot's champions are just way too strong in competitive environments, which usually lead them to being picked or banned during the competitive season. When this is the case, they sadly have to nerf a champion into oblivion, even if their overall win rate below masters is negative. We're going to be diving into a few champions that have suffered this sad fate. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Number 1. Kalista. If you've even glanced in the direction of pro play, you know how much of an impact Kalista has made. With her high damage, insane mobility, and powerful ultimate, she was a force to be reckoned with. Riot ended up taking a little bit of her early game damage and mobility away to make sure that she was still viable as an ADC, but just not as prominent. With this in mind, top laners saw how strong she was and decided to take their turn on the Kalista train. While she may not be as strong as she used to be in the bot lane, she was more powerful than ever in the top side. With the ability to bind to the jungler, Kalista could easily set up dives with their ultimate. She would make her jungler tank and right before they would die, she could force them to drop aggro. If he thought that wasn't enough, she could also use her high mobility and DPS to destroy every top laner in the meta. With time, many pro players picked her up and used her to the point where Riot realized that she was a balancing nightmare. They were forced to nerf her even harder, which finally removed her from the top lane while also removing all hope that she had in functionality in the bot lane. All these nerfs were done even while her regular play rate and win rate were low, which soon led her to losing even more popularity. In her current state, Kalissa can be played with decent success depending on the meta, but it has been fully established that Riot can't really buff her or risk her running rampant. Maybe one day she can get a mini rework so that they can finally bring her back into the pro scene without her dominating the stage. Champions like Kalissa are always strong in pro play because of both their high skill ceiling and high skill floors. Sometimes you won't click with these difficult champions and you'll need a little bit of help with their mechanics and master their playstyle. But not to worry, Summoner. Here at Pro Guides, we've got your back. We have an in-depth guide alongside challenger-level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. So, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and join the Pro Guides family. Anyway, let's get back into the video and dive into our next champion. Pulling us back into the video, we got none other than Akali. This champion has been an absolute nightmare for Riot to balance after her rework. On release, she suffered an insane amount of bursts, sustained mobility, and her shroud even let her dodge turret aggro. These mechanics made her quickly climb the ranks of the pro scene, as they were showing just how skillful Akali can be. After some time, Riot nerfed her just a little bit by taking away some of her sustain, damage, and the extremely broken shroud mechanic. Even after the first set of nerfs, she continued to be a powerful pick. Her kit as a whole simply offered too much and in the right hands, she could 1v9 games with these. Even though she was sitting on a healthy win rate in solo queue, she had to get nerfed yet again to make sure that she didn't take over the pro scene. After countless nerfs, she finally found success in the top lane as a drain tank that could also destroy tanks and a few bruisers. Time and time again, Akali just continues to pop back up into pro play as a powerful pick just to be nerfed once more by the Rito gods. While she's extremely fun, she's also extremely dangerous to work with as one small buff can bring her back into the meta. Next on our list, we've got Azir. On release, Azir was taking the mid lane by storm thanks to his unique kit. His ability to attack using soldiers from afar was like nothing that we've ever seen. Not to mention that he could knock up champions with his E, he could damage turrets by summoning soldiers, and his range used to be significantly longer. Azir quickly took over pro play as a pick or ban mid laner because of his powerful kit. Mid laners around the world from the power of evil to faker hopped on the train to take advantage of this new champion. Riot saw how strong he had become and quickly nerfed him. After some time had passed, people were finding better ways to play Azir as they discovered iconic mechanics like the Shurima Shuffle. This led him to be extremely popular in pro play and being borderline broken as he could safely farm, hyperscale, and be an engage tool. Riot took another try at nerfing him and eventually left him in an extremely sorry state. With his higher difficulty, no one in solo queue would dare to try him so he fell in both win rate and pick rate. While he had received a few compensation buffs and can sometimes function in the meta, Riot won't be giving him any big buffs anytime soon. Even now, he's a viable pick in the meta, but who knows for how long. We've got yet another ADC that has run rampant, and this one is still fairly new. Seri has nearly taken a record with how fast Riot had to create a mini rework for a new champion. On release, she was able to itemize bruiser items which made her unkillable, uncatchable, and she could shred entire teams. Pair this with a safe landing phase and decently high range, and you've got an ADC that strikes fair into pros everywhere. She quickly became a pick or ban champion due to her power and the inability to deal with her. Riot gave her a small rework that forced her into crit itemization, lowered her mobility, and made her early game awful. It seems that even with these nerfs, Zeri continues to have a high presence on the stage which stems from how great of a champion she is. Her unique kit and great playstyle lets her to continue to be picked. Even after a few additional nerfs to her numbers and even more nerfs coming soon, it seems that she will remain in her spot as a top tier ADC in the pro scene. You can even catch ADCs like Danny seeing how broken she is. These nerfs may have ruined her solo queue potential for many, but to pros, she will still be viable. 
Speaking of ADCs, you didn't think that we'd forgotten about Mr. 200 Years, did you? This marksman was one of the most unique champions in the game thanks to his gun switching mechanic. Each weapon offered a different playstyle and their own actives as well as passives. With this versatility and power, Aphilios rose to the occasion and became the biggest meme in pro play history. He could CC enemies, sustain himself, deal DPS, burst, and have AoE damage, and he had it all. On release, he could have been destroying enemies globally thanks to his turret. He could win against any champion in the game due to his adaptability. With only two items, an Infernum ultimate can wipe out an entire team thanks to its high AD ratio and crit damage. There have been so many problems with Aphilios that it took multiple patches of gutting him just to reduce his pro play presence. Unfortunately, this has left him in a sorry state for Aphilios lovers everywhere. He has consistently maintained the lowest win rate in the game, and he won't be getting any buffs anytime soon because the 5 gun madness may ensue. Overall, he quickly went from the best champion in the game to a dodge on site pick in your solo queue games. Let's take a quick break from these champions and move on to our favorite pro guide tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what champion do you want to make the grand debut in pro play? Let us know your answers in the comment section down below. Anyway, let's get back into the video and dive into the next champions. 6 7, Zaya plus Rakan. Pulling us back into the video, we've got Zaya and Rakan. This loving duo took the bot lane by storm because of how powerful they were together. Zaya had a strong laning phase with great damage, especially if the enemy team had a dive comp. Rakan offered a balanced combination of peel and engage. Together, they had enhanced mechanics such as being able to share a recall, Rakan having a boosted E range, and Zaya offering her DPS with her W. These two were constantly picked together at first because of their strength, and over time, Riot caught on to how strong they were. They were forced to tackle their safety and mobility as a whole. So, they made sure that Rakan couldn't eat to Zaya from 3 screens away, and then W instantly. Paired with this, they lowered Zaya's damage and made her ultimate a longer cooldown to reduce her safety. This itself heavily impacted their play, but they were still being spammed on stage together. After countless attempts, Riot ended up gutting Rakan's kit and made Zaya rely on Lethality to get by. While they both struggle to keep up now, they're in an okay spot where they can function by themselves, but they'll never be the OP duet that they once were. Maybe someday this iconic duo can be revived and balanced to be played in both duo queue and pro play. Next up, we've got Ryze. We could make an entire video on Ryze's many, many reworks, but let's make this one short. His champion design as a whole was created to offer a classic mage playstyle that could combo spells. The issue with this is that it offered way too much playmaking potential, and had a high skill ceiling that pros took advantage of. With their superior skills, they made Ryze go from a decent champion into a broken one. Time and time again, Riot tries to fix Ryze, but it just doesn't work. He can't get buffed in any way or else he ends up being broken. Ryze has gone from being a drain tank, a hyper carry, a burst mage, whatever you can think of, he's done it. Maybe in the future he'll get completely overhauled and made into a champion that isn't a balancing nightmare, but as of now, he is a face of Riot's worst decision in champion design. Moving on, we have Talia who was recently reworked. Talia was an incredibly cool champion that a ton of players fell in love with. Her kit was unique, her story was cool, and her theme just captivated entire audiences. She wasn't your generic pretty girl AP champion who was perfect. That being said, she definitely hit the mark of being too strong. She was initially designed as a mid laner who could quickly clear waves and roam the map on a giant wall. This very quickly became problematic as she was dealing way too much damage and having way too much impact on the map. A few nerfs later, she wasn't able to be played mid anymore. Riot took this time to transition her kit into a jungler since she had the built-in AoE clear and mobility anyway. This, however, wasn't a great fix either. She ended up being one of the best AP junglers in the game, and people quickly took advantage of her great synergy with Pantheon. Over the course of a couple of patches, she was taken into the pro scene where she could just show how good of an AP jungler she could be with an AD mid laner or fighter in the top lane. Riot nerfed her numbers yet again, and finally decided to readjust her kit one last time. This fully brought back the mid and jungle together where she can now switch depending on what they decide to buff. While she is still decently strong, she's no longer the beast that she used to be. Unfortunately, she is often regarded as not being the same champion anymore because of her many changes. Last but not least, we have Tom Kench. Similar to Talia, TK has undergone so many changes, and players are fairly upset about it. He was released as a tank support that could offer insane mobility and protection for his ADC. Tom Kench was a staple pick for teams all around who wanted hyper carries but also wanted to avoid assassins. After a while, Riot decided their mistake and decided to send him up to the top lane and rework his kit by changing his knockup and his eat ability. Here, he became a powerful top lane tank that was nearly unkillable as the game went by. Tom Kench was a nightmare as he became a standard top laner next to somebody like Orn due to his insane damage and hyper tank ability. He ruled the top lane for a few patches before Riot finally decided to revert him back to his support. There, he now lives with Senna as an OP bot lane duo, both in solo queue and in pro play. Unfortunately, Riot keeps changing TK and his fanbase really hates how he's often shifted around. I mean, imagine if your favorite champion role was swapped three times. At one point, I think he was supposed to be a jungler. I don't know. 
Anyway, that sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our ProGuides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys back in the next video. Don't forget, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.